let's start off with Gauss law. What does this law give us? Well, this law gives us the analysis of electric flux. This gives us the analysis of electric flux from a closed surface. It's very, very important. From a closed surface and its relation with the enclosed charge. This law gives us a relation between flux, a three-dimensional surface, all right, closed surface and the relation with the enclosed charge inside the surface. First one, okay. Next, the total electric flux associated. Now, what does this law say? The total electric flux, the total electric flux, let's say that is phi, associated with a closed surface, so this is for a closed surface, all right, is equal to the product of sum of all the enclosed charges is equal to the product of sum of all the enclosed charges times 1 by epsilon not times this constant. This is simply put forward my dear friend your Gauss law. See how simple life has become now. You will say why how sir why sir I will tell you how. Think about this charge and think about a surface like this and we were supposed to find the flux. Okay. Now if we are using Gauss law, the surface that we use or we call this three dimensional surface as the Gaussian surface, no problem. So if we are supposed to find it by the Gauss law, then the only thing, the only concern is what is the net charge that is enclosed within this Gaussian surface. What is the net charge that is enclosed within this Gaussian surface? So we'll directly write phi net, that is the net flux because of this enclosed surface, because of this closed surface for this closed surface is equal to sigma net charge that is Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. That's it. Now think if you are going in terms of mathematics, like the, the, the first method, what you would have told? You would have told, and this is the net flux, right? This is the net flux. What you would have told, okay, we'll take an element and then this element will be having some area, dA. This will be the direction of the area vector. Then we are going to draw the direction of this electric field, right? And then there will be some angle theta. So how we are going to write? Yes, for small d phi, I can write this equal to e dot d a times cos theta, right? Or e dot d a directly like that we can write, no problem. And then we need to integrate this, integrate this where? Integrate this through in this entire closed surface, right? So this is how you're talking about the closed integral, all right? So this is the symbol when you're integrating over the entire enclosed area, all right? So we are talking about this entire entire surface no problem so you have to integrate this and many a times this might get mathematically too complicated to do it even uh, beyond the scope of our syllabus right okay so by doing all this you are going to get finite all right Gauss law comes and tells you hey wait 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 don't worry you don't have to do all that okay you don't have to all you have to see is that within this Gaussian surface, the surface that we are talking about, this three-dimensional surface on which we apply Gauss law, we call that as Gaussian surface. What is the net charge that is enclosed? You find that out, okay? You find out what is the net charge which is enclosed and then divide it by epsilon naught. So, or multiply it with one by epsilon naught, that is a constant, no problem. That is the value of the net flux, simply, that's it. No problem, okay? So, this is what it tells you directly. There is no problem. All right. So that's how it's a shortcut. So it tells you that you don't have to worry about all that. You don't need to think about all that. All you need to think is what is the charge enclosed in that Gaussian surface and then divided by epsilon naught. No problem. Otherwise, well, if you think about the mathematical expression of it, we know one way to write the value of phi net, that is in case of a closed surface, I can write the net flux can be written as from the basic idea E dot ds or dA. Let's take it as dA, no problem. That's what we have been using, E dot dA, no problem. 
Now this is also going to give us finite. We know one more formula of finite that is equal to Q enclosed. Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. No problem. So what we can write? We can write closed integral of electric field over this dA, that's this entire Gaussian surface, is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon. Did you get this? All right. Okay. Now think about it. By using this, in certain situations, we can also find the electric field intensity very easily. Very easily, we can find the electric field intensity. Of course, all those things we are going to do it as we see the application of Gauss law. Now, what is Gauss law in a very layman term? I'm telling you, it tells you that if there is a charge Q which is placed inside a three dimensional body, Okay, and we'll call this surface as the Gaussian surface. The net flux associated with this Gaussian surface because of this charge Q which is enclosed inside is Q by epsilon naught. So if the charge is 2Q, how much will be the flux associated? Tell me. Net flux. Net flux. 2Q by epsilon naught. If it is 3Q then 3Q by epsilon naught. 4Q then 4Q by epsilon naught. It's as simple as that. And if there are number of charges, then all you have to do is sum them up. Find the net charge which is enclosed. Okay. Now, if I ask you a very simple question, let's say in this Gaussian surface there was a dipole. Okay, let me just ask this question verbally. Okay. If I'm saying that in this Gaussian surface there was a dipole, okay, what is the net flux through this surface? Tell me, what is the net flux? Dipole. What is the net charge enclosed? Net charge. What is the dipole? Hmm, I've heard dipole somewhere. What was dipole actually? Dipole was two equal and opposite charges separated by a small distance. And if I have a Gaussian surface around it, then what, what do we have? The net charge enclosed within this Gaussian surface plus Q, minus Q, net, zero. What is the flux? Zero. Yes, absolutely correct. <laughs> you see how simple this gets. All right. And as we go on moving, you'll see that it goes on simplifying things for us. All right. Okay. So now is the time. Let's understand the essence of the Gauss law. Let's understand the application of the Gauss law. Let's understand that how do you actually first thing is choose a Gaussian surface. The thing is that yes, it has to be a three dimensional surface, right? How do you choose that? How do you choose a Gaussian surface? Because we know that the net flux associated by the, in this Gaussian or by this Gaussian surface is Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. No problem. So now, if you think about it, how this law has actually made our, our life simpler is that now I don't have to worry about the surface at all. The only criteria is it should be a closed surface. The only the first criteria, most important criteria, should only be the closed surface. Because if you see, by Gauss law, it has nothing to do with what type of surface you have chosen, what kind of surface it is, nothing to do with it. So all this uh, problem of drawing the area vector and choosing the elemental area and all that, all that just goes away, just vanishes, right? Okay. So it tells you that if there is a plus Q charge and if somebody has taken, let us say a sphere and uh, the surface of the sphere uh, or the surface area of the sphere is S1 and he has chosen a sphere S1, somebody else chooses a sphere S2, somebody else chooses a sphere S3, for all of them, the net flux will be equal to Q by epsilon naught. For all of them, for this guy, for this guy, for this guy, for all of them, because whatever lines of forces are coming out, they will cross through the first sphere, second, third, so it has nothing to do with the shape and size of the spheres. It's nothing to do, no problem. So electric flux is independent of the size and shape of the Gaussian surface. It is independent of the, shy, the, the shape and the size of the Gaussian surface. Now next point, a very important point, very important point. If you consider this, that we have an arrangement of charge like this, no problem. And if I need to raw, write the net flux associated with this surface, all right, this is our Gaussian surface, fine. What I can write? I'll write phi net through this enclosed surface is going to be equal to sigma q enclosed 
divided by epsilon naught. That gives me phi net is equal to q1 plus q2 divided by epsilon naught. No problem. Okay. Now we know that this value, this phi net, or let me write it over here, this phi net is also equal to closed integral of e dot ds. I know this or da e dot da no problem now i can rewrite this as closed integral or phi net is equal to closed integral of e dot da is equal to what we have got q1 plus q2 divided by epsilon naught no problem now if i think about this electric field if I think about the net flux and if I think about the charges, what can be told about all of this? Now, this is something very important and a very minute detail about this law. If you think the net flux has nothing to do with the charge which is outside the Gaussian space, nothing to do. All right. And I have told you why. Because we have seen that for a three dimensional surface, if you place a charge outside, the net effect on the flux is zero does not have to do anything, correct? So net flux only depends upon the net charge which is enclosed within the Gaussian surface, correct? But when you talk about this electric field, if you go by the basic formula, what is this electric field? What is this electric field? Is this electric field because of Q1 or Q2 or Q3? So well, many students make a mistake by thinking that this electric field is the net electric field because of only the charge which is enclosed, which is wrong. The electric field, and this is the beauty of this law, the electric field is the net electric field because of presence of all the charges in the system. How many charges are present? 1, 2 and 3. So this electric field vector, if I have to write electric field vector, this is nothing but the net electric field vector is a vector sum of electric field because of the first charge plus electric field because of the second charge plus electric field because of the third charge. The net electric field, it comes from the basic idea of the flux, right? So it tells us that the net flux through this Gaussian surface has nothing to do, nothing to do if there is a charge is placed external to the Gaussian surface. All right, it has nothing to do. The flux has nothing to do with a charge which is placed external to the Gaussian surface. No problem. But when you talk about electric field, you are going to get, if you write this formula that is closed integral of E over dA, that is E dot dA, then what you are talking about is, what you are talking about is that the net electric field is because of presence of all the charges irrespective, again, irrespective whether they were present inside the Gaussian surface or they were present outside the Gaussian surface. Did you get this? All right. This irrespective of the charges, whether they were present inside or outside, the electric field you are going to get is always going to be the net electric field. Keep that in your mind. All right. Very important point. So now this is how you're supposed to think in terms of electric field and the net flux. All right. So when you're writing it like this, when you're only talking about the net flux, it, yes, it only depends upon the charge which is enclosed. But when you are talking about the electric field, this net electric field vector is because of all the electric field vectors that is present because of presence of all the charges in the system. 